hey everyone, I'd rather go here. And I want to try to build a Daisy Walker deck that specializes in being a healer and fulfilling that sort of support role that you really kind of want to get out of your third and fourth party members. Once you already have that hyper-specialized fighter and cluver, you really do want to get more of a flex character going for your third one, but one of the ways you can do that is by building sort of weird seeker builds that have access to lots of healing and burst damage. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do with this Daisy Walker build. I don't know if I'd ever recommend this as being like your main cluber in a two-person party, but as more of a support build tailored towards the third or fourth character. Now, just core cards of Daisy Walker that are automatically always going to be in our deck are the old Book of Lore to abuse and constantly scry your deck and draw with as Daisy, Abigail Foreman to duplicate the effect that you're using constantly, and Research Librarian to find your old Book of Lore. In terms of being a healer, we're going to be using Medical Text Level 2, which we can slot onto our Abigail to potentially heal for 4 health with 1 action. We could also just deal 1 damage to you and exhaust the book, but that probably won't happen. And for the horror side of things, we'll be using Logical Reasoning. At the end of this, I'm going to try to cut Logical Reasoning for a versatile setup with Book of Psalms, but I'm not going to think about that too much until I've finished off a Support Daisy deck without it. I think I've already filled out the core cards of this deck. I don't think I need anything else to fulfill my function. So let's immediately just throw in Practice Makes Perfect, because I know that's disgusting in Daisy. You have access to Deduction, Perception, and then on the Mystic side of things, Promise of Power and Enraptured. We need someone to put those charges, so let's go get our Pendant of the Queen immediately. We definitely want Miskatonic funding here. Abigail Foreman's taking up a slot, Research Librarian draw our cards. Miskatonic funding is just obviously going to fit in the deck, and we can probably make use out of both copies of Charisma as well. Just immediately going to throw in pretty much the whole gang, right? Jeremiah Kirby, Dr. Milan, and then also we can probably get laboratory assistance just for the draw. And the deck's immediately running out of card slots, as you would expect it to do when you're doing dumb things like this. So right now we have three ally assets pretty much on lock, and then two very expendable allies, a laboratory assistant and research librarian. Looking at this, I don't think I want Laboratory Assistant. The deck's very low experience right now. Let's go get Mr. Roy. And that gives us enough to run a Sounding Revelation as part of our economy. And I guess we just throw in Burning the Midnight Oil and look at all the cards that we've forgotten to include because the deck really doesn't hold all of the stuff we want, and that's actually a great sign. The fact we're out of cards now, and I still have very powerful cards that I haven't included makes me think I can get away with doing something terrible, I can run Versatile. Let's cut out these logical reasonings, and suddenly, we can do the spiciest thing of all time, which is use Versatile to get a card from a class that wouldn't even play it normally. Let's go add Book of Psalms. Now, I can't help but notice we do have like three mandatory hand slots. Does Abigail actually hold the book for us? Okay, that's good. So between Abigail and Daisy's tote bag, we can hold all of this stuff, which leaves room for other hand slot assets. We might not have the card slots for that, but that's fine. It's really hard for me to imagine that deep knowledge isn't just automatically going in the deck. We've basically included no draw except for practice makes perfect and opal right now. Old book of lore. Probably shouldn't call it opal because that's an acronym that is the name of a different card in the game. This just looks gross. Let's go get that uh, ward of protection that I was talking about earlier. Is there something else in purple that I usually run in Daisy that I'm forgetting about? No, there's really not. Okay. Um, this feels like we just have all the room in the world then. This isn't even that hard to fit into the deck. Like, this is a 35-card deck with no obvious cuts. Um, unfortunately, we don't deal damage at the moment. And there's some easy experience to spend that would let us do that. I've been going back and forth for a while with this occult lexicon. Ultimately, I think that if I'm playing a support character, if I'm playing the third or fourth member of a team then it's hard to justify not running a cult lexicon. Me being here is the reason that we're seeing additional enemies, and if I just spend three experience or even run the base level cult lexicon, I might not cover all the enemies I'm spawning, but I'm helping enough in times of crisis that I'm not weighing the team down on the enemy front. A cult lexicon just does so much for one card slot in either zero or three experience that I feel like I have to put it in the deck. And now that I have to find a cut for that, I also want to talk about something else. The deck doesn't quite feel like it has enough economy. It has Milan once you play him, which since you're going to hard mulligan for him and Mr. Rook and the old Book of Lore as well, it shouldn't take you that long to get a Milan in play. 
but the Astounding Revelations and Midnight Oils on their own feel like they're just a little bit less than I want. I think I really desperately want to crack the case as well. And the fact that I'm currently trying to cut down from a 38 card deck is a really good sign to be honest. It means that like, Versatile is probably not that bad in this list. I think maybe Cryptic Research is just an upgrade from Deep Knowledge, but even as I say that, if I'm the support character, Deep Knowledge and Cryptic Research are amazing. I can throw them at my fighter who's missing his weapon, or at my other Kluver who like desperately needs whatever card is in their deck and they're finding. Let's say Eon Chart and Ursula, whatever. Those cards are so valuable as team support tools, they feel uncuttable. Like the whole deck feels core, nothing feels like something that I want to throw out. I could just cut the segment of Onyx. The deck has no mobility if I do that. Like, it's actually valuable just as the teleport and nothing else. I think segment of Onyx is always broken, and when I build a seeker like this that has legitimately no mobility, I feel really hesitant to cut it. I could, like, cut the segments of Onyx and a Promise of Power for, like, a one of Pathfinder. I'll find that relatively reliably between the Old Book of Lore and the Mr. Brook. But again... Segment of Onyx lets me evade enemies, that helps my team. Teleporting me around is better than Pathfinder. Promise of Power can help my team quite a lot. It's just really, really hard to say what the right cut is here. I think it is Segment of Onyx. But if I cut Segment of Onyx, Enraptured is pointless, so I need something else there. Which is fine, I can just throw in Plan of Action, that'll still be a hit, it'll still be good. And it makes the cut easier, it can be the Plan of Action instead of the Promise of Power, and I can put in Pathfinder, I like that. And I hate Segment of Onyx, so the fact that I'm cutting it, even though it might be wrong, does make me feel a little bit better. So we put in one plan of action and a one of Pathfinder. And I think I like that. I think I actually like that quite a lot. It always feels terrible to cut Segment of Onyx. In terms of experience to power, it's easily the best card in the game. With a super high draw deck like this, it feels relatively easy to assemble. Being able to evade enemies anywhere is awesome. Three Tesla's clues as a worst case scenario is a fucking great place to live. And teleportation in a relatively low draw deck is obviously great. But I think that for five card slots, because it really is the reason I'm playing this in Raptures as well, it's not quite worth it in this deck. Just running a Pathfinder so that I have enough mobility, I'm not holding the team back if we're in like one of those chase sequences, is good enough. Running the plan of action makes the deck have more draw. And the economy from Crack the Case and the damage from the Cult Lexicon, all of that felt really relevant. I think this is what I want to aim for as my final deck. I think I'm happy with this. My first thought as soon as I cloned this deck is, do you run Versatile to start with the Book of Psalms? I think the answer to that's a hard no, right? Oh. Why am I running Book of Psalms if I'm using Versatile instead of Hallowed Mirror? Can someone tell me that? Okay, that's actually fairly easy, though. I can, I can fix that. You run Book of Psalms if you're in a blessed team, and you run Hallowed Mirror if you're in any other team, right? Like, that's just obviously the correct way to do it. Ah, oh, man. That makes me so sad. Why on earth do I even care about using Book of Psalms if I can just versatile in the Hallowed Mirror instead? And the answer is I don't. If I'm in a blessed team, I can do that. That makes me so sad. I really wanted Book of Psalms to be ideal. Actually, I think I'm going to keep it as Book of Psalms. I'm not even going to switch it to Hallowed Mirror. Just going forward to understand that if you have no reason to care about blessed tokens anywhere in your team, you should probably make that change. It costs less money. It doesn't take up a hand slot. It draws you cards. It leads your Abigail free to do other things. Oh, it's so much better. It's just... Damn it. And once I'm doing that, I'm just like arguing because like my deck's just all Seeker cards. Cut Ward, cut Promise. Just play a Seeker. Use Versatile and get Hallowed Mirror. And at that point, like, that's fine, I guess. But why didn't you just not use Versatile and get the um, Gateway to Paradise version of Archive of Conduits? Oh, this sucks. I hate this realization. This is terrible. <laughs> now it's not even relevant that I'm Daisy. So legitimately, at this point, I think there is no reason to play Daisy specifically as a healer. Because if you can use Versatile to get Hallowed Mirror, which is just better than what I'm currently doing, and it also seems like it's arguably just worse than using the Archive of Conduits, which any Seeker could do, 
then running Daisy as a healer generically doesn't have a merit. There's, there's no reason to do it whatsoever. However, that means that there's a reason to run Book of Psalms now, because without Book of Psalms, this is not a blessed support build. So this is now officially a deck tech for Blessed Daisy. Daisy has no blessed card, so this is really just a support character for a blessed team in the form of a healer slash cluver with a little bit of burst damage that can throw over the course of a game, I believe it's 16, two times four times two? Yeah. You can throw 16 blesses into the bag eventually. That'll really help out a blessed team eventually. And sadly, we do have to evaluate it strictly in that context now. This is only for working in a blessed team. Otherwise, why didn't you take Hallowed Mirror? And if you took Hallowed Mirror, why didn't you just spend two more experience, get the Archive of Conduits, and cut five cards from your deck to be much more consistent? And in this Daisy deck, it does look like there's a real argument that your answer was, there are no cuts from my deck. My deck has no pathetic cards. But unfortunately, that is almost always wrong, and there almost always is a cut. It's just hard to find. I do think this is one of the few decks that looks like it's making a really good case for taking a versatile Hallowed Mirror over Archive of Conduits, but I'm done thinking about that. This is officially Blessed Support Daisy. We're not even considering switching to Hallowed Mirror. Full steam ahead. Let's make the level zero version. Now, most of these don't actually have good level zero alternatives. Uh, the Occult Lexicon did, but the Medical Text level zero is kind of trash. Mr. Rook is great level zero when you, you know, aren't playing with Taboo, and now he doesn't exist. Cutting Pathfinder makes it pretty obvious that I want to throw shortcuts into the deck to make up for my lost movement. But except for that, I'm currently sitting on a 28 card deck with no idea what else I want. It's definitely possible to pick in the thick of it in Versatile in this deck and not have it be a meme. Like, I'm, like I'm currently split 5-9, going down to 5-7 is fine. Seeker allies tend towards having more horror soak anyway. And I'm, I'm using my versatile to get the horror healing that would fix the problem, aren't I? Like I said a second ago, if we're evaluating this strictly as a blessed build to justify going for Book of Psalms over the alternatives, then in the thick of it, her versatile isn't a meme. I, I feel like I'm losing my mind because I've somehow argued myself into this corner, but if I'm specifically here to help bless builds, then I want Book of Psalms as early as fucking possible, <laughs> which means that this is right. Also, I, I hate to point this out, but as I will be taking level two wards of protections, instead of taking in the thick of it, you could take two copies of Arcane Research for the same trauma to get four experience, and there's no way in hell I'm going down to 5-5 five, five and doing both. So I'm actually losing experience to get this level 1 versatile. That feels terrible. Holy shit. I think you cut Book of Psalms and in the thick of it and versatile. Because most of the blessed payoffs where you really need the blessed tokens, things like Nephthys or Holy Spear or Favor of the Sun with Ancient Covenant, your team doesn't have that at level 0 anyway. In Scenario 1, they don't need the blessed tokens the way they do later on, so you don't need to run it that early. So we have three cards spare. We can always just throw in a plan of action, a Milan, and a Kirby, and be like, cool, our deck's consistent now. And that seems like a super reasonable thing to do. Like, it's not particularly interesting, but it's fine. The deck has a lot less economy demands in this version, so you're probably giving the crack the case to your teammates, but that's fine. And honestly, as boring as that level zero change is, I think that's just what you do. We don't take Arcane Research. We could. But if we did, we'd have to take Ward of Protection at level 0, and it wouldn't be good in the deck. I feel like there's no reason not to start with either In the Thick of It or Arcane Research. It's just... It's almost free experience when I'm building a deck that heals horror and has 9 starting sanity. So the question is, do I cut like one of Plan of Action, one of Jeremiah Kirby, and put in Ward of Protection? Or do I start with Versatile? And unlike the Joe Diamond deck, I really can't run Medical Student here because I desperately need these allies. How's the Joe Diamond deck running Medical Student? Excuse me, Joe Diamond deck, I have a question for you. When the fuck are you playing this Medical Student? You have Milan and Kirby and you kind of need them. Let's go put the Overpowers back in. Yeah, the fact that I don't have Charisma sort of kills this Medical Student, doesn't it? 
Like, I want the medical student. It's obviously good in the deck, but you can't play it because your ally slot is locked. And for that same reason in Daisy Walker, the medical student doesn't fit. So it looks like at level zero, in the first scenario, you really don't get to heal very much. I think I will take the arcane research over the in the thick of it and just cut two cards, the Kirby and the plan of action, like I was saying. And the reason that I like this more... Oh, apparently my deck wasn't at 30 cards. In that case, let's get the plan of action back, because I'm pretty sure I was supposed to keep that in the deck anyway for the in-game build, right? Yeah. And I like this more because just having the extra experience, taking two horror starting damage on a character that's going to be healing eight horror over the course of a session... It's only eight... I don't really have a good way of cycling the book, do I? Yeah, no, I actually don't heal that much horror with this setup. God, I'm just making such a good case for using Hallowed Mirror, aren't I? Like, the fact that I only heal 8 horror. Like, total. Unless I'm cycling the book, which I don't have a good way to do. If I do a full count, right, of my hand slots, I have the Necronomicon in one, and I have four hand slots as a daisy's bag. I have five books, so I can use an old book of lore and just play it out, and it'll be terrible, strictly to kill the Book of Psalms if horror is going horribly wrong. That doesn't sound like a good thing, to spend two actions and six resources to refresh my Book of Psalms. The more I talk, and the longer this video goes on, the more I'm just like, you know what you shouldn't do? Use Versatile to put Book of Psalms in Daisy. But we're fucking sticking to that. That's happening. That's, that's beyond reproach. This is Bless Support Healer Daisy. We're done. What's crazy to me is this deck isn't even bad. It's just as sick as I thought it was when I was first looking at it. I just wish it had a slightly better, more efficient way of healing horror. And I'm, I'm upset that the healing's not infinite, but like I said in my first video about healing, you don't need infinite healing. Carolyn Fern is gross overkill. You can just heal like eight horror over a game. And that's enough to make someone who auto-failed Rotting Remains comfortably not die. Even though I'm getting like kind of upset that the healing's not infinite with Book of Psalms like it is with all of the other sources, you still heal for 8 with Abigail Foreman on every use. But the difference is that, unlike the other ones where I can heal an infinite amount, this will only keep one person alive through multiple crippling Rotting Remains failures. Which is still really, really good and incredibly powerful, but when it's limited in its power, it can't keep the whole team alive through bad variants. And I'm giving up eight uses of Old Book of Lore, which is some real powerful shit. That is eight scry threes that I can use on anyone in my team. And instead I'm healing horror. Like the opportunity cost is just fundamentally so much higher. Why am I doing this instead of building a deck that just uses something else to heal than a book? And that's really what it comes down to. I think I'm actually going to abandon the Daisy deck. Like, this is good. You can do this, and it's a blessed deck that works. But I think I'm going to stop thinking about the starter deck and how to optimize it, because I just don't care anymore. I think that's actually the conclusion of this one. This is less of a deck tech and more of, like, a live deck experimentation at this point. Because, yes, this does let me heal my team. People should not be dying on this Daisy's team. This is a support flex daisy putting blesses in the bag. It's filling a cool niche in the game. And if I needed to play a Kluver and a Bless team, I'd be seriously considering this deck specifically. But outside of that specific niche, the opportunity cost of using Old Book of Lore instead of doing this is so high. It is such a big thing to be giving up two copies of Scry 3 every time I'm healing. All the other healers we've talked about have had an opportunity cost of, like, one action, and usually some way of generating extra actions. This is a way to use Daisy's ability to heal, which is really cool, but it's mutually exclusive with the main good use of Daisy's ability that we've all come to know and love, Old Book of Lore. Coming back to the level 0 deck, because your healing is so limited, and your head score really isn't that good, I don't think I'm in a position where I would feel good taking Mental Trauma. Mental trauma taken on Daisy might be horror that I have to spend my time healing, and once that's the case, it wasn't worth the experience. So I think these actually are the final decks I would use. This is the starter deck I would go with. And this is the ultimate goal of the Daisy deck that I would be building into. At the end of the day, Book of Psalms and Medical Text and Daisy are both really strong ways to make use of her ability, but Old Book of Lore is such an opportunity cost. 
Because if you're playing a support character, you can just be using the old book of lore on your teammates as well. There's no such thing as a bad old book of lore when you're trying to be a support character. No matter what's left in your deck, you can help your team with that. So I look at this, and as a healer, just strictly as a healer, I can immediately cut Medical Text and Book of Psalms, free up my hand slots, stop worrying so much about playing the tote bag, put in a Hallowed Mirror, and suddenly my deck costs two less experience, and I have a card slot for you to put onto something. Worst case scenario, second plan of action. Which is probably something I won't, because I only have seven cards, and my practice makes perfect is a little bit sketchy now, because I do have five extra cards in my deck. It's just really hard not to compare it directly to the obvious change of Hallowed Mirror and a better practice makes perfect, where you're just the same healer, but better. And if I do this, then again, there's an obvious change. The cuts are a lot less obvious at this point when you're upgrading to Archive of Conduits and removing the Versatile, but the second Old Book of Lore isn't as necessary when your deck is five cards smaller and the research librarians really don't have anything else they need to be doing. The second Crack the Case isn't as necessary. You don't need to pay for all these other fucking books anymore. Losing the Deep Knowledge sucks. That's valuable team support that I would like to have, whilst no experience. But at the same time, up until you buy Cryptic Research, you didn't lose anything. Because Cryptic Research is basically just upgraded Deep Knowledge. When you look at the Blessed starter deck, it isn't doing any healing or Blessed stuff. And if you were to put that versatile in to do that, the deck would get a lot worse. Because the next five cards in the deck are basically all cards that don't do anything right now. When you look at the fully leveled up version, with the Medical Text and the Cryptic Researches and the Abigail Forbins and the Mr. Rooks, with a versatile in this deck, the reason I didn't run versatile is because you don't get anything good at level zero out of a versatile. Hell, even at level 0, if you use Versatile and you get the Book of Psalms, you can't duplicate it with Abigail Foreman, so it's really not that valuable. So at the end of the day, I sat down to make this really cool Blessed Support Daisy deck. And what I found out is that yes, there is a healer shell for Seekers. It's not just a theoretical thing I can point towards. Whenever I try to build a Seeker deck that is built for healing, there's an inherent gravitational pull where whatever I'm doing is directly compared to Archive of Conduits. And when I find it wanting, the deck gets scrapped and we go with Archive of Conduits. I like this deck. I don't think there's anything wrong with this Archive of Conduits deck. I think it's a really cool example of how Daisy, despite just being a straightforward, powerful Kluver, can also be a good support character. And I think it's less cool than this frankly ridiculous blessed support Daisy deck. This is awesome. But there's no reason to play this. Which is basically a good summary of blessed builds as a whole. They're awesome. But from an optimization standpoint, it's pretty hard to justify. Alright, I've just been sitting here in silence for about a minute staring at this deck. It feels like there's more to say. I like both versions of the Daisy deck, but I'm very sad to see the Book of Psalms Bless build feeling so suboptimal compared to the direct alternative. I'm legitimately feeling quite demoralized at this. So even though I feel like there's more to say, I'm going to go ahead and let the deck speak for themselves and stop rambling. I've been rather incoherent. I hope you liked the video. I hope you liked watching me go through my process of deck building, how I build decks and how I view cards and how I come to decisions about what ultimately does and doesn't make it into a final deck. Because this isn't the video I plan to make. I did plan to make a very different deck than this. And it's possible to make secret decks that don't just look like a high draw archive of conduit shell. Coming over to the Joe deck, the Joe deck doesn't look like an archive of conduits build because archive of conduits is mutually exclusive with Farsight and Hallowed Mirror is doing more than good enough on its own. There is a compelling reason to not use Archive of Conduits if you want Joe to be a healer. But for almost every other Seeker, probably every other Seeker, there isn't. There's an argument, funnily enough, on any Seeker that has a very hard time hitting 35 cards that has built-in draw to use Versatile and Hallowed Mirror over Archive of Conduits. If you're a high draw Seeker where the loss of consistency doesn't really hurt you, Hallowed Mirror is arguably better than Archive of Conduits, and it costs you less experience. It's probably wrong to do that, in every case. It feels like it would be wrong. But that is an actual argument. Unfortunately, it really doesn't feel like there's an argument to use Versatile to pick up Book of Psalms. And even though Daisy Walker's ability does give you free actions which you can use for healing, that whole premise behind Green making characters into good healers because of Leo and Haste is here, 
Unlike those dedicated fighters that really had nothing better to be doing with their time, as a Kluver, you are always able to find clues. And even if you hide behind the shield of Flex and choose to heal instead of choosing to find clues, you still can't ignore that as a support character, you could have used two copies of Old Book of Lore with your Abigail Foreman. And unless someone was literally about to die, that would have been better. So ultimately, all this book shit with Daisy doesn't feel very good because it's competing with Old Book of Lore. Right after I ended this video, I realized I'm not allowed to stop yet because I haven't actually finished the Archive of Conduits build. Archive of Conduits has a limited amount of healing if you're using it in a way that's action efficient and you want to be using it in the action efficient way. You don't want to be using it one for one. You want to burn the ley line every time. So to do that efficiently, we need to run two copies of Divination, which means we have to cut two cards in the stack to have a final list. And that actually might be the breaking point where we have to make a huge change. It might be just finally that the deck is too bloated to fit the practice makes perfect setup. This is actually what I expected to happen originally was a cut practice makes perfect. I hate doing it, but there are a lot of decks in the game where practice makes perfect is good and what you're doing compromises it. And I think this is one of them. Because I think if we cut these five cards, just go down to perceptions and deductions, we put back Old Book of Lore for consistency. We go grab a deep knowledge. And the deck is looking a little bit expensive for what it's doing again. So I think you get a second crack the case over something else. It's going to be this Old Book of Lore. That feels right to me. It feels like there's no way to fit the additional five cards from here. There's nothing to cut. I legitimately think the previous version of this deck is better. So to compare the list, what I've done is I've gotten Divinations, a second crack the case, and deep knowledges. In exchange, I lost my practice makes perfect setup. Deep Knowledge is a really good card, especially if you're supposed to be a support member of the team. Divination is essentially deduction times two, so losing your ability to duplicate the deductions, which is the ideal circumstance for practice makes perfect, isn't actually that bad. And the second crack the case is definitely nice, especially as we're increasing the cost of our deck by including these divinations to begin with. I don't think it's immediately obvious which of these is better. Because such a huge part of Archive of Conduits being amazing is that you can just use your turn playing and using it if someone's about to die. You don't need to be healing steadily throughout the game. Once you've cycled your deck, Archive of Conduits is in your hand and you can just keep it there. If your fighter has a bad turn, gets hit for two horror, auto fails a rotting remain of the menace phase, and plummets all the way from six horror to one, then you can stop and spend your time and spend an entire turn playing and using Archive of Conduits kill them back up to five, give them four more cards, get them back in the game. You don't need to do this divination cycling nonsense that makes the deck super expensive. So in spite of the fact that I didn't actually make the infinite cycle version of this deck where you can keep using divinations to replay your conduits, I don't think that matters. I think you'd actually rather just have archive of conduits. And if your team needs more than eight healing of any kind, then you had terrible luck. Because almost every campaign I've run in, we didn't run healing at all, and no one died. So I think trying to cycle the Archive of Conduit is just like a wholly unnecessary rabbit hole I've went down. It's a really cool thing to do if you have the economy and the deck building rules to allow it to be good, but there's no inherent need to do it, so I wouldn't cut a practice makes perfect setup to do it. But I'm not just getting the duplicated Archive of Conduits. There's a very good argument for cutting the practice makes perfect, because it gets you the second crack the case, it gets you the deep knowledges. It is adding other good things to the deck when you cut practice makes perfect. But I think this is just a more compelling, cheaper, tighter deck. Anyways, still demoralized, still ending the video now, still sad that Book of Psalms is almost an objectively wrong choice. Because this deck might be hot garbage, but it's my hot garbage, and I love it. Someday, my tables are asked to play a blessed team, and I'm going to bring this terrible deck in there. And every single time that I heal them, I'm going to berate them mercilessly for costing me two draws. Like, I can already see the future. I'm going to heal my teammate of horror damage. He's going to be at two. He doesn't even necessarily need it. But if he auto fails rotting remains, he would kill his only soak and die. So I'm going to heal him with Book of Psalms, and then I'm going to draw Astounding Revelation during the upkeep phase. And I am going to hate this deck when that happens. Like, it's not hard to see why this is bad. 
but I just didn't catch it until I was like already halfway down the rabbit hole and realized I should just be doing the normal Seeker thing that has nothing really to do with Daisy. It is worth noting that Daisy is inherently one of the better Seekers to use for support decks though. Her ability, because of Old Book of Lore specifically, makes her one of the most consistent reliable Seekers for drawing specific combo pieces, so if you just want to be insurance that no one in your team is allowed to die, Daisy is one of the better decks to do that. After all, you have Ward of Protection on top of that and Promise of Power to get through the test in the first place. This deck might be worse. It is worse. There's no mind about it. But I like it so much more. It has all of the team support cards. It has the Crack the Case, the Cryptic Research, and the Deep Knowledge. I'm reading multiple different books to keep my team alive. It might not be broken, but it feels to me more like the deck should feel. And this feels like they just printed a card that's probably too strong. Because if no one's playing healers, then it's probably because the healing cards are too bad. And that might be true by and large. Aside from Hallowed Mirror, there really aren't very many healing cards that give you compelling reasons to use them. But Archive of Conduits is just too much, man. It might cost four experience, but... Heal two, draw two, four uses? That's insane. Anyway, I'm done for real this time. This is the same deck I started with when I said I needed to make more adjustments, but it turns out it's in a really good spot and getting more than eight healing is wholly unnecessary. I've been Rather Incoherence, I'm leaving for real this time, and I'll see you in the next one.